It's my pleasure today to welcome to our daytime dialogues, Lonnie Nassiter. Lonnie Nassiter is the president of our Jewish United Fund, Jewish Federation of Metropolitan Chicago. He is a person that I've had the pleasure of working with very closely since he assumed the role this past year, but of knowing for many years. Because as many of us know, the Nassiter name is the gold standard in our community. His father led the Federation with great distinction for so many years and has really built the foundations for what Lonnie is doing today. Uh, and it's really a, a joy to have Lonnie on board and despite the situation we're in today, because I want to spend this time talking with him a little bit about um, how things have changed. You know, Lonnie, when you first came on board, mm -hmm. I remember those brief videos that you put out, yeah. what your favorite Yiddish word was and your favorite right. thing. Right. And I have a feeling that like the rest of us, you had no clue where everything was headed, that we would all be in long videos so <laughs> for this period of time. So what, true. besides the, the basic COVID piece, what's been the yeah. biggest surprise you've encountered? since you assumed the role? Hmm, that's a great question. First off, I want to thank you, Rabbi Matanki, for your leadership in our community for so many years and your friendship and support. I have to tell your community, your congregation, just how wonderful you've been to me personally, to the JUF for so long. So all the nice things you said about me and my family, the same for you and your family. Uh, and it really is an honor for me to spend a little time today in the middle of a a Wednesday afternoon, just kibitzing. Um, I got to tell you, so what's been the biggest surprise? You know, growing up the son of, and obviously JUF was a huge part of my life growing up. And then when I became an adult, of course, I was intimately involved with the organization. But what, what, what has been so startling in a good way for me is just the breadth and scope of the work that we do. Um, both in terms of the programs that we run, but also the amount of dollars that we allocate to so many amazing Jewish organizations, not just here in Chicago, but all over the country and the world. It's enormous. And so I've just been blown away by the breadth and depth of, of our organization and the impact that we have on the lives of so many every day. That to me is what keeps me going. And even in a time of crisis like we're in now, I get up in the morning ready to roll because I know that the work that we're doing has such profound impact across so many different parts of our community and the Jewish community and the non-Jewish community as well. So for those who don't know, since the COVID crisis started, Federation has not just stepped up to the plate, but has taken over the plate. Mm -hmm. In the sense that, uh, you know, every day there is all sorts of things happening in the Orthodox community, which I didn't even know about, Lonnie. And then all of a sudden we yeah. discovered, and the way I found out about all the amazing things that happened, the thousands of meals that are being provided, the services that are being provided, is because Federation came to us. And uh, I have the pleasure of trying to coordinate some of the chesed activities. And yeah. uh, they said, we want to give money. We want to support. We want to do things. Um, in all of this COVID, What's been, can you mention like a couple of programs that have uh, blown you away? Yeah, I mean, you know, what's, what's popped up in terms of the Orthodox community, you know, Chesed Center and, and Kiwi and all these amazing things. I got to tell you, the ability for the community to just come together so quickly and in such a nimble fashion and be there for those that are most vulnerable was not only inspiring, but so important. And that's why it compelled us at JUF to not only watch with great admiration, but then also double down and send significant resources to those things that have popped up uh, in the Orthodox segment of our community. So kudos uh, for just the leadership and the, the sacrifice. I mean, you see these people out there every day um, giving food to those that are vulnerable. I mean, it's an amazing, amazing thing to see. And it just speaks volumes about the spirit of our community. Um, and I've also, you know, the, the ability for everybody, everybody is impacted by this pandemic. Some more than others, clearly, but everybody, whether it be through your family, your own job, you, everyone's touched by this. It's an equal opportunity offender. However, in terms of those, unfortunately, that have really borne the brunt of this in terms of death and all the rest, we see a disparate impact in terms of socioeconomic. But everyone has been touched by this pandemic. However, what I have seen in our community is an unbelievable outpouring of generosity. And even though people's 401ks and their stocks have probably been hit and their own economic future may be unsettling, it hasn't deterred people from giving back both their time and their dollars to those that are even in worse shape than themselves. 
And that is just, again, a testament to this community. And I have to tell you, I speak with my colleagues across the country, and we are unique here in Chicago. Not to say that we don't have amazing Jewish communities in other parts of this country, but there's something about the, the water in this place. And Rabbi Matenki, you and I are born and bred Chicagoans. There is something about our connection to community, both in terms of our Jewish community and the community at large, that is very unique. And maybe it's a part of the fact that we aren't a real transient community, that many of us may go study somewhere else, but we come back home. Maybe it's because we're kind of the Midwest and we have good values and we care about each other in ways that maybe other parts of the country don't emphasize it as much. Whatever it is, there's something magical about this community and their altruism that is, again, incredibly inspiring. And I've seen it in spades throughout this pandemic. I want to shift for a second to something sure. that I've been wondering a lot about. Mm -hmm. Your background, for many years, you were the head of the ADL, the professional mm -hmm. head, the regional director of the ADL. You built up an extraordinary organization with the Anti-Defamation League, and you dealt with a lot of the issues that are now in the forefront of, of America itself. And now you're sitting in Federation, which is also the, one of the key, if not the key, organization which provides social services and support and leadership in our community. Um, we're confronted as a Jewish community with dealing with questions of racism that we have to accept responsibility for, of reaching out to a black community, to a brown community, an Asian community, but also at the same time where there's anti-Semitism built into it. So like in the Black Lives Matters movement, I've had people come out and say, Rabbi Matanki, you have to come out in favor of Black Lives Matters. Mm -hmm. And I've responded, uh, I can do, I'm all in favor of the idea. Mm -hmm. But the movement is problematic for me because of some of their positions they've taken. Okay. How's our community dealing with it on a federation <laughs> level? It's not easy. Um, I think you just articulated it very well in terms of you can be in favor of racial equality, racial justice, thinking of ways that you can concentrate your own efforts to reach a point where there's more fairness in this country. Because I think we all recognize it is not a fair playing field for people of color in this country. It hasn't been since the inception of this country, hasn't changed much in 400 years. We've had some incremental growth, no question, but by and large, we still look at this as just a not balanced playing field. And that's really what these protests the peaceful protests are about. There's a recognition that the game is different for people that are of color in this country, especially blacks. Uh, and the black American kind of struggle has been significant. And we as Jews, not just because we have a shared sense going way back of slavery and all the rest, I think that argument is something that we shouldn't even really be thinking about now. We should be more talking about what the Jewish response is. The Jewish response, we know this, we study it all the time, is how do we take care of each other, not just Jews, but all people. When we see people in suffering and the stranger, that's what compels us as Jews to reach out and figure out a way to make it a fair playing field. So, but we're stuck in an incredibly polarized, complex political world right now, where there's these groups that sometimes will say and do things that don't feel right for us. And so we have to say, sorry, really not going to do something that connects us with an organizational principle that's antithetical to Jewish values or us as a Jewish community. And Israel has a piece to this too. But, but Rabbi, I think that we should be focused on the core issue. The core issue is that we as a community can think of ways to interact with our Black brothers and sisters that we can leverage our relationships, whether it be with elected officials, whether it be with law enforcement, whether it be with the business community, whether it be our own marshalling of resources to help in ways that they're saying to us, please help us. Again, we don't wanna say, hey, listen, we're gonna give you X without talking to them first. The key is how do we leverage some of the benefits that we have had as a community to help level out the playing field. That's what we should be focusing. That's what JUF is focusing on right now. We've thought of a lot of things in the last week and even before this whole you know, situation that has been brewing in this country over the last week in terms of George Floyd, we've been talking about our GCR mechanisms of ways that we can push back uh, on what we see as hardcore inequity in our community. And we have it here in Chicago. And really where, and the last thing I'll say is as, as somebody that's a part of the so to speak, the epicenter of power in the black community in Chicago isn't the NAACP or the Urban League much anymore. It really is in the churches. 
And so for our approach is that we are going to do all we can, and thankfully we have such great relationships with Black pastors in the city, to say to them, how can we as a community be helpful to you? It's not us saying, here, we're going to give you X amount of dollars, or we think this is in your best interest. That is the wrong way of dealing with intergroup relationships this time. It's more of us saying, we're with you. Our voice is there with you. I've reached out. They know that I have and all the rest saying, what can we do? But let's listen. Uh, you know, there's a Spanish word, escuchar, listen. We need to listen sometimes. And we listen all the times when we're davening and we're, and we're listening to our rabbis and all the rest. We need to listen to the black community and tell us what they need. And that's our role, if you ask me. I'm going to take a commercial to everyone yeah. else and just say one of the big advantages, which people sometimes forget about that we have with Federation, is we have that voice. Because otherwise, in a lot of other communities I know and from colleagues, yeah. Yeah. there's no central, no central address, and especially on these big issues. Yep. So let me, let me get to another piece, which I sometimes get frustrated about. And when we have a, um, a Federation Malava Malka, I always use this, and that is, the Orthodox community in Chicago has, has received great benefit from Federation. Uh -huh. um, look, we just got almost $500,000 to help support the Chesed organizations, and that doesn't talk about all the rest of the services just in the last two months because of COVID. Yep. Um, our day schools receive millions of dollars from Federation. And yet, when we look at the Orthodox community's support of Federation, there are people who support Federation, but a lot of people prefer direct small gifts or large gifts to institutions versus a centralized body that will then distribute it. Yeah. Have you, I know it's an old frustration of yeah. Federation. How do, we, how do we deal with that? How would you... Uh, no, it, it, it's a good question. And, and, I, and, I, and I'd like to start with like, you know, I, I'm, this is my 11th month, right? And I'd like to kind of wipe the canvas clear right now and say, let's start with a clean canvas. And let's start from the perspective of, we are all in this together. I don't believe in my heart of hearts that the concept of a federation system is antiquated, lame, uh, no longer applicable or relevant. I think what COVID has told us, shown us, Rabbi Matenki, is that if not for a federation system that was able to assess need, raise the dollars, have the relationships within two seconds to be able to send there, there's no way we would have been able to do this emergency initiative to the tens of millions of dollars that you mentioned earlier. No possible way. So take that as the beginning point, is that thank goodness we have a strong federation that has relationships, that has the apparatus and the foundation to be able to respond to a crisis like COVID. And I think the more that, again, it isn't in your face, but the more like yesterday, for example, we did something on Facebook where we did a JUF bit. It was 30 seconds of a, of a guy who lost his job, went to the ARC. The ARC got him back on his feet, both in terms of job opportunity, food, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we've sent hundreds of thousands of dollars, JUF, to the ARC during this crisis. And, we, and they're one of our organizations that we have been allocating dollars to for years. But over and above the allocation, we gave them significant amounts during the last three months. Those are the stories that we at JUF need to tell. So I don't think it's a situation where the orthodox segment of our community is saying, ah, the heck with JUF, they don't do good work. I think people understand it. But maybe they don't understand, going back to my first point of this discussion, the full scope and breadth of the JUF and how it is going into all different portals within our community, from day schools to synagogue help, to hardcore food and cash assistance, to Sinai. I mean, you get all of that. I think it's more of an awareness campaign that we will be doing. And that's why I'm trying to tell the story better than we've ever told, as evidenced by yesterday's piece. And we're doing more and more of those. So for those of you out there, I, I, I really compel you to, if you're part of social media or you want to be a part of our email distribution list, we are really trying to tell our story better of how it's impacting so many lives every day. And I think slowly people will appreciate it. And that hopefully will result in support that we think is appropriate. Uh, and that would be very helpful because the bigger our largesse, Rabbi, the more we can do. No, there's no question. And, but we are watching a demographic shift in America. Mm -hmm. where the Orthodox community is, will, if, you know, we never know to trust numbers about predictions. Right. But these predictions are that the, before the end of your tenure, since your tenure will be about 
35, 40 years long, like your father's, please God, before the end of your tenure, the Jewish community of Chicago is going to look very different. It's going to be very heavily Orthodox. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the full range of Orthodox. And uh, the larger segment that looks like will be in the Haredi community, then there will be a modern Orthodox community. Yeah. Um, how are we, uh, how do we prepare for that when our, our support of federation is different or our support of, yeah. of other segments of the community is different? Right, right. And we only know that, you know, the dollar only goes so far. Um, you know, I think there has to be, and, and maybe we're just beginning to scratch the surface of how we can be more, more synergized too. And, and there may be opportunities for us to be able to, you know, kind of choke off some of those barriers to giving to JUF because we can ensure people and assure people that the places you care about, we are going to make sure that we are going to give to them. So there's ways for us to break down the bureaucracy maybe and be able to make it feel much easier and seamless to be able to kind of maybe give to one place and knowing that there's going to be a funnel approach to the places that people really care about. Um, but it, it's, it's going to be a full court you know, almost like, you know, me doing these types of programs over and over. I'm, I'm going to be with the Orthodox Day School Boards tonight. Um, I'm very committed to going out to all different parts of our community, including the Orthodox community, and having discussions like this and talking about work that we're doing and getting input and listening and, and figuring out ways that we can re-strategize. Listen, the, the Day School Guarantee Trust came about because we listened and we heard the concerns of the Orthodox community and the non-Orthodox world that were sending their kids to day schools. And we said, all right, let's think this through. What can be a great future model? We raised the dollars and away we went. And I think it's a huge reason why we have stability in the day school world here in Chicago, while many other cities don't. Mm -hmm. So I'm confident. I, I'm, I'm actually quite bullish in terms of the next generation of our community, understanding the role of JUF, um, I, I can almost guarantee you that I will continue to refresh my senior team with people that are thinking out of the box, uh, progressively leaning in terms of what can we do different in terms of engaging our community in ways that maybe JUF hasn't before. And I think this pandemic gives us yet more opportunity to think differently and repurpose, rethink, reimagine how we engage with different segments of our community. How do you, and so picking up reimagining. Yeah. I'm working out of a bedroom on the second floor of my house. I assume you probably on the second floor, third floor? I'm on the top floor. The top floor of your house. Uh, both of us have um, nice offices. Yours is nicer than mine, but it's okay. You deserve it. And uh, we're not in our offices anymore. And I, Federation, I assume the building is open on a very limited scope. That's correct. Um, That's correct. How, how have all these changes, like going forward, is, uh, do you imagine that we're going to be, Federation will be working differently, not just with different kind of projects, but even working differently? Uh, do you imagine the community will be different? Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, from a, from a just an institutional perspective, we made the decision mid-March to go virtual. It was the right call at that time for sure. Listen, uh, well over 50% of our employees take public transportation to get to 30 South Wells. Uh, you know, I'm not going on the L right now, uh, and, and most people aren't, uh, which for obvious reasons, it's, it's, it's a tough decision to make in terms of your own personal safety. So for me, it's all about safety and comfort in terms of people's willingness to do things like that. So we've decided to continue to go virtual at least through the summer. We'll reassess. You know, the world can change quickly in three months. Who knows where we're at with a vaccine, a certain drug that can be taken. You know, we don't know, but I keep on moving the goalposts farther down in terms of us coming together as one. I've been really, really impressed with our ability, and I'm sure you've seen it in your own, you know, in your school. Um, people have stepped up, and you realize, all right, let, let's start Zooming. Let's start thinking new ways to do it. We're resilient people. We'll figure this out. Um, you know, we raised a lot of money for this emergency initiative. We've picked a new chairman of the board. We have a new nominee. I mean, everything's still rolling, getting paid, making sure that we're doing our audit. So the world has continued. And I think part of the challenge for me, besides being in reactive mode for the last couple of months, I've got to now also start thinking a little bit more towards the future. And that's exciting to me because I think we're going to be able to do things and have a receptivity that maybe we haven't seen pre-COVID. Uh, receptivity to Judaism, leaning in a little bit to your identity. I can tell you in the non-Orthodox world, when I talk to our rabbis in different parts of our community, throughout the North, South, and, and all the rest, they tell me, Lonnie, 
we're having 10, 20 times the number of people participate in our services. Um, it's, it's an amazing, almost like rebirth of Judaism. Now the cynic can just say, everyone has time and they have nothing better to do their home. They might as well plug into their Saturday morning or Friday night Shabbat. But I'm gonna take a more optimistic tone and say, you know what? This may have provided a time period for people to really take a step back and to think a little bit about what's important in their lives, um, their own spirituality, their own connectedness, their own identity. Maybe that they've thought of a grandparent or a parent they've lost and their connection to Judaism. I think there's an opportunity for us to engage Jews in ways that maybe we weren't able to, or at least didn't have the proclivity to want to be engaged pre-COVID. And that excites us. You know, it's uh, even in the Orthodox community, we're next week, starting on Sunday, we're beginning our services again. And we will have multiple services every day, one outside and multiple ones inside. So it's beginning to change things, but there are certain aspects of programs that we've done virtually that we're gonna continue. We're not, we're moving away from prayer, it, virtually. Nobody wants to be by themselves right. to dominate. Right. Right. Okay. But when it comes to everything else, classes, even this program we're doing today, yeah. I had uh, some people who watch it every week tell me, uh, don't give it up. We need it, we like it, it's fun. Yeah. And it is fun. It, it is, is fun. fun. And I think people, to people, there's something about, you know, sometimes just being able to kind of get up in your own house and just plug in and not have to worry about getting, you know, getting all prepared and dressed up and all the rest. It's very comfortable and, and this may be a new world for us and we have to pivot also and we will. No, I, I remember I saw you at the Dafyomi celebration, the Siyom Hashanah celebration, yeah. and our class in Dafyomi at the shul is twice the size now that it's virtual. Um, and I, it's going to be very interesting because this week when we go back to services, we're not having any classes yet, just the services. And when we go back, um, it's interesting to hear how the Dafyomi guys are trying to figure out now how to work it because right. their time of Dafyomi, they like it being synchronous and they like being all together on the, some of those videos. And it's fun sometimes watching how they interact, but they're larger and they're more and they're more classes mm -hmm. that are taking place throughout. And I, my guess is a lot of that is also happening in the non-Orthodox world. I think so for sure. And it's, it's anecdotal, but I mean, everyone I talk to in the, in the conservative and the reform world are telling me, boy, this has just been an amazing resurgence. And, and, they're, and they're so motivated and energized by their congregation's willingness to be engaged and talk about issues that are of importance. And, and so that's, you know, I think there's, we have an opportunity here. We just gotta really kind of hone in on, on what people need and want right now. And JUF has always been good at kind of figuring out where the levers we can pull here. But, you know, I've always been worried about continuity and, and, and you know, raising Jewish kids. And, you know, maybe we have an opportunity here to lean in a little bit more and emphasize all the different programs that we provide from J baby to a right start programs to all the rest to get people to say, you know what, my identity and my religion is important to me and it's going to be important for my children as well. So uh, Lonnie, we have a group of people listening now and we'll have about three times based on previous experience, watching it recorded. Okay. And you have an Orthodox shul yes. that you get to talk to. It, what would be, you know, I'm giving you now the moment, what, would, what is the most important message you want to tell the Orthodox community? I want the Orthodox community to know that JUF views our community as one big whole. I don't view it as, well, there's the Orthodox part and the conservative movement part. And the, we are all one Jewish community. So I will never say, well, we have to make sure that the Orthodox, no, it's not. It's a segment of our community but I don't want to demarcate different communities within our own community. We are the Jewish community. And I think one of the things that we have done that has been so unique and so special and so important is to always project big tent. We're all in this together. When issues come up about anti-Semitism, we're one voice. When issues come out about racial justice, we're one voice. When we have a pandemic that's affecting Jews, we will make sure that no Jew goes to bed hungry that's a part of our community. That's a part of our social contract. That's never going to change as long as I'm the president of this place. And I just want your congregants to know that I'm accessible. I'm here. Um, so are my colleagues. And we view, again, it doesn't matter what the demarcation is. We're all one community. And I'm just excited to, to serve it and to helpfully have vision and the abilities and the resources to do good. 
and and on that I just have to share with everybody else again. Lonnie, um, when he got started, he was going rabbi to rabbi to organization to organization for months. How many how many months were you just? Well, my first three months I was very committed before I even started in July. So April, May, and June of last year. Thankfully, I had friends like Rabbi Matanki and and Brian Levinson and many other people in all parts of our community that would say, "Let me spend a day with you and just expose you." And it was a wonderful experience. Yeah. And Brian is Brian will get a shout out because he's watching this live. <laughs> my guess is afterwards uh, we'll have to compare notes. Who gets the WhatsApp or the text faster from Brian <laughs> after we're done? Uh, we'll check on it because Brian always wants to check on <laughs> us as well. Yeah. Okay. But we have a lot of a lot of really uh, great supporters of the JUF on the call on the on the program and the watching and in the shul as well. And it's always been a pleasure. And I just have to thank Lonnie not only for his leadership but for leading an organization that we've always been very much a part of. Uh, KINS is proud that we have programs every year to raise funds for JUF, even if we don't bring in the largest synagogue donation, which we don't. Nevertheless, we have it, and we want to make sure we have it. And I'm proud of the fact that I have been uh, co-chair of the Rabbinic Action Committee, which everybody wants to know what it really is. Well, what it really does is it's an opportunity for rabbis from all different segments of the community to get together. That's for the shul, that's why I go away somewhere uh, every year with a group of rabbis. And it's also the opportunity, which most people don't know, that I get to call up rabbis and solicit them for gifts for the JUF. Uh, I don't think I was told that in the beginning that that was the job, but it's been a pleasure as well to do. So there's a lot of things we do, and I get to see Federation also from the other side, from the academy as well. Lonnie, I, I really appreciate all of this time. It's been great. I, I do have to get one last thing in on... Um, Rabbi Bressler is watching this as well. We know he's a, unfortunately a Cardinals fan. There's not much we can do about it. Uh, and unfortunately, you're a Southside fan as well. There's some team down there that I understand some people follow instead of the Cubs. But we will bring everybody around. We do believe in Shuva, Rabbi Bressler. There is no need to head. defend. Yeah, it's no problem, Rabbi Bressler. One of the beauties of this is that I can actually mute you. It's something I can't do in Shul, but I can do this as well. But we, but we believe in tshuva, and it all works, and it all be great. And uh, Lonnie, I really appreciate your oh, time. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. My and pleasure, and, and thank you to you and your congregants for years of supporting JUF. And Rabbi Matanki, again, thank you for your support and friendship. Your, your shul should know that, you know, there aren't, there aren't many rabbis that I lean on more than Rabbi Matanki for counsel and guidance. And again, I really do appreciate that. And you've made my first year that much more rewarding by having that friendship. I appreciate it. And as I've said other times, I will make sure my mother watches these segments <laughs> of this program. Thank you to everybody, she, all the kids. She can appreciate it. Thank you very, very much, Lonnie. It was a pleasure having every, everyone with us this week. And next week, just to remember, we'll be hosting another very special event. We have a President Richard Joel, the former president of Yeshiva University, who will be joining us on Daytime Dialogues. Shul starts on Sunday morning, so please go online. At Sign Up Genius to be able to make sure you have a spot. Each minion will only have 15 people maximum. We're making that available, and tonight we have a webinar about it for people who want more information. Lonnie, thank you very, very much, and thank you to everyone who is listening. Stay healthy. Bye-bye.